A good report from a heavenly spy by Larry Hodges. Chapter one: A full and complete redemption. There shall be a total and full redemption by Christ. This is a hidden mystery, not to be understood without the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Is at a hand to reveal the sin to all holy seekers and loving inquirers. The completion of such a redemption is withheld and abstracted by the apocalyptical, apocalyptical, revel or revelation seals. Wherefore, as the Spirit of God shall open up seal after seal, so shall this redemption. Come to be revealed both particularly and universally. In the grand opening of the mystery of redemption in Christ, does consist the unsearchable wisdom of God, which may continually reveal new and fresh things to the worthy seeker, in order to which the ark of the testimony in heaven shall be opened before the end of this age. At the living testimony herein contained, shall be unsealed. The presence of the divine ark will constitute the life of this virgin church, and wherever this body is, there must the ark of necessity be. The commonly held view of redemption by most of the traditional Christendom is simply that. We all go to heaven after believing on Christ. When we die, this is a, such a limited view of the glorious work of Calvary. There is much more to this salvation. It is much fuller and more inclusive than conventional religious teaching has given us reason to believe. But as usual, error has run faster and. Yelled louder than truth. So today, at least in most places, truth must go outside the traditional circles of acceptance, of acceptance, where the impostor is held to be truth. Thankfully, we have the ever faithful Holy Spirit on hand to take the things of Christ and reveal them to us if we are really seeking and asking with the right heart and motives. May He reveal His heart and our purposes concerning the hour in which we live. To you, as you continue reading these lines, God is as always has been interested in more than just keeping us from some hell. He is in perfect control of all things and never gets the least bit anxious about the way things are going because they are going exactly the way He is ordering them. In every least respect, our God reigns. This prophecy clearly states that this mystery of Christ has been purposefully withheld and obscured by God Himself. But then, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many will run to and fro. And knowledge shall be increased, Daniel twelve four. Yet again, Revelation ten four. And when the seven sounders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven sounder uttered, and write them not. Seven being the number for fullness, completion. Maturity, perfection. What the seven sounders had uttered was clearly a message concerning fullness. It was not to be revealed until the time of fullness. Obviously, John and Daniel both saw something which was not to be revealed universally in their day, but they were told expressly to seal up those things. Paul also said that he had been, he had seen things about which it was unlawful 
or not permitted to speak. But we have a further word from the Lord concerning the unwilling of the things, concerning a time when it be according to his good pleasure to reveal the thing to those who, to whom the things would pertain. But in the days of the voice of the seven angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery God should be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophets. Revelation 10, 7. That is, in the days when the seventh angel shall begin to give, give forth the message of fullness, that which has been sealed and withheld shall no longer be a mystery. We have seen the actual opening of a seal after seal and truth after truth has been progressively restored to the church. It has been rather sad to see that in a law seemed to have been at work concerning this progressive revelation God's heart and purpose towards mankind. By law, I mean, it, it seems inevitable that many of those whose heart were set ablaze with the preceding revelation Christ and for those who have received the latest revelation. So in our day, we can remember when those who had received the blessing, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, have followed those who went on in the further revelation of sonship. It seems that we are very prone to calling apart the whole, but we who have been the recipient of the glorious message of sonship, that it pertains to the resurrection of the dead, stand in danger for doing the same things concerning the even glorious truth of eternal judgment. Brethren, we are to go on unto perfection. And what is the purpose of God in opening seal after seal in such a grandiose disclosure of the mystery of Christ? That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Ephesians 1.10 there is and always has been a pointed time in which the Father would bring all into Christ. The glory of God, the divine ark of God, is because in Christ are hid, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Colossians 2, 3 Christ himself is the divine ark, of which Moses' ark behind the wheel in the Holy of Holies was but the type. In him is life. In him is the glory. In him are the promises. In him is the inheritance. In him who is the resurrection and the life. Therefore only that which is of him will be raised in the resurrection. Only that which is the resurrection will have part in that the first resurrection this prophecy says that the testimony in heaven shall be opened before the end of this age, and the living testimony herein contained shall be unsealed. Simply put, in our modern physiology, the people of God will for necessity be moved into the real life and the essence of what Christ is by a supernatural act of the Holy Spirit upon them. No longer will men get it by living in the realm for concepts or doctrinal stands, but there will be an actual entry into the inheritance, which is Christ, into the total and complete redemption that he, brought, he bought and paid for concerning those who will follow him wherever he leads them. Brother, sister, this world has never seen that which God has in store for some in this hour. There are in this present hour many places religious where, of religion where there is nothing of the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit or even the slightest except expectation that he might even pay them a visit. They have so long wrong things, control things that they no longer even notice that Iqbal, the glory, had departed 
a rating over the doors. These are well able to do for themselves and neither need or expect divine assistance. Not so with the virgin church. Like Jacob Old, whose name was changed when his nature was changed, this virgin church has been so weakened in the way, so dealt with, so chastened, and, or, and trained that they can do nothing of themselves. This is part of the secret of their strength. They must have the presence and direction of their heavenly ark, or they are lost as to what to do. Next. They have come to the place where they have realized that they cannot live with outside the presence of him who is their life. They are irretrievably irretrievably connected to Christ as an ever-dying man is connected to a modern life support system. They can't live without him.